Is college one big scam? Well, let's find out. When we look at the education system, it seems to have largely failed society. Overburdened with debt, those who have graduated are unable to find the jobs that they desire. Those who get a job are probably not receiving the pay that they expected. So the question is, is college one big scam? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm not here to make a decision for you. You must do what you want with your life. I'm going to show you some statistics and then I'm going to talk about what I believe to be more intelligent at this time in 2019 and going forward. So let's get into the data right away. I found this chart out of Statista and it really led to what you're seeing in the video today. This happens to be for the UK, but basically I'm just using it as a prop to talk about how people, in this case teenagers, see their life playing out. So at 19 years old, they're going to go to university. At 20, they're going to buy a new car. They're going to move out of their family home. At 22, they're going to go traveling. 23, have their dream job. At 25, start a business. Two years later, get married, buy a home, have children and by 29 they are earning a lot of money but then we go back to reality and individuals throughout this period of time don't get any of that they don't get their dream job they don't start a business they don't get married they don't move out of their parents house and they have incurred a hell of a lot of debt in the process okay, that's what reality really shows us and statistically as time goes on this is only getting worse that's what I'm seeing that's what I have documented here on the channel now does that mean that you shouldn't go to school, that you shouldn't extend your education beyond high school. Well, I didn't say that. You should do what you think is beneficial. I'm not telling you. All I'm showing you is statistically the way that things are going. So more people are finding that they are going to school for longer, incurring more debt, and yet they're not happy. Their jobs are not paying what they thought they would. They're still living at home and they can't pay their bills even though they should be able to, quite frankly, many cannot. There are different reasons for that. Maybe they're wasting their money. Maybe they're not spending it properly. That's a whole different story. I'm just showing you what I can personally prove. Student debt is astronomical, and if you've been following this channel, or even if you haven't, this has made it to the mainstream media, and that is $1.5 trillion worth of student loans today in the United States. This is only getting worse. It's a perfectly straight line all the way up and across, and as time goes on, we're just going to see this multiply further and further. If you look at this for each individual, it's terrible. The average person is going to incur $37,000 worth of student debt. All of that has interest on top of it. So the longer it takes you to pay off, the more you got to pay. That's the way I look at it, okay? So $37,000 plus the interest, whatever that might be. Of course, you have to remember all of the other bills that you're going to have. You're going to have your credit card bills. You're going to have your house bills, whatever that might be. You got your regular expenses. You got to pay for food food, and so on. So $37,000 plus interest is just one piece of the puzzle. That's what we're focusing on right now. So you have to think about this. You get into school, you may or may not be able to take a part-time job throughout that period of time. If not, you're probably taking on even more debt throughout there. Depends on the type of course. If your course load is extremely tough, then you're probably not going to be able to have a part-time job or something very minimal. So you're not going to be able to make the money. You end up taking on more debt. You're not able to save, you're not able to invest. None of that's happening. That's all prolonged until after you graduate, after you get a job. This is a problem for many because once they do graduate, they're not getting where they want to be in that period of time where they had estimated they would be. That is just what we're finding today. You're going to take your monthly payments. And in this case here for the student loan, the average monthly student loan payment for borrowers age 2030 is, as of 2016, $393. Back in 2005, that was $227. So obviously we can see that this has been compounding as the years go on. People are getting more into debt. College is becoming more expensive. That's very clear. You're going to go into the field, 
that you desire and you're going to be able to make that magical amount pay it off in two years problem solved but of course it doesn't work like that this is the way i think of it you go to university perhaps at 19 some people take time off they go in a little bit later but regardless you're gonna be there let's say for four years maybe you're gonna be there even longer perhaps but after a few years of a lot of debt you'll come out and you'll be able to get a job perhaps and then you can begin on every everything else but you have to pay off that debt before really anything happens and that's your credit card debt your student debt any other forms that you've taken during that period of time you're not going to be able to properly invest you're not going to be able to properly save for your future you can't get a down payment on your home because you got student debt and that is a heavy burden thirty-seven thousand dollars plus interest is obviously going to burden people one of the major factors that nobody in your family is going to tell you, none of your friends are going to tell you, and of course the media is not going to explain this to you, but according to recent research, 62% of recent college graduates are working in jobs that require a degree. Yet only 27% of college graduates are working in a job that even relates to their major. So you have to understand what we're seeing here. People go into this education system, they believe it's the right thing, they end up getting a job in a completely separate area, many of which don't even require that degree. So what was the point in the beginning? Now, of course, if you wanna be a surgeon in an emergency room, it's great, it's fantastic. I'm glad that these people went through their education, they went through debt, and now they're well paid. That makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. But if people are gonna go this route, they're gonna get an education, just to have it because they were told to do so because it's the right thing to do I can't agree with that because statistically you're not gonna make the money that you had hoped for not in the appropriate amount of time and you're probably not even gonna end up in the field you thought you would so how can you conclusively say that this is a smart idea remember I'm talking about 2019 I am NOT talking about 30 40 50 years ago that's a whole different story I'm talking about right now. Where are they now? 2007, 2008, class employment. Percent of these graduates who were employed in 2012 by their major. So looking at this, the STEM majors, 85%. Engineering, 89%. You go down the list, general studies, 79%. So the chances of you actually being employed, of course, depends on your major, depends on how many jobs there are available, but also at the same time, are you getting a job that you had hoped for in the first place? That's very important because you don't wanna be doing work that you don't like because you're gonna to have to do it for a long time. I personally know many, many people who were working in positions, they had no intention on working in this job for a long period of time. They just needed something. Okay, it's pretty good. Maybe later I'm gonna transition out of it. I'll be able to transfer departments and I'll get to the right place. But it didn't work out that way. And then they were in the job for five years and after 10 years they had so much seniority, then they're in there for life. And that's basically the way it works. I've seen this so many times personally. Now we're gonna get to some information that I wrote up because I wanted to make sure that I cover all the points. Starting with the actual facts. Average student incurs 40,000 US dollars of student debt. Average person doesn't get the job that they desire, doesn't pay what they want either. Instead, understand what made you choose this field in the first place. Was it the money? If it is, or it's because the benefits are substantial, let's tear that down for a minute, okay? If you're extremely passionate about the field, then absolutely pursue it. But if it's the money, we are now in 2019 and that needs to be looked at differently and that's where my opinion comes in okay if you don't want to hear the opinion thank you for watching this far into the video statistically that's it I'm gonna move on to what I believe is important okay all right nobody else anybody else here that doesn't want to hear the opinions okay let's get on with it the education system is largely a failure people don't learn anything useful and don't seem to get where they want in life you must calculate your entire monthly expenses if that is two thousand dollars per month as an example you must figure out a way to make that amount of money reverse engineer the way it works you can get a job you can build a business you can invest a very large sum of money into an investment that gives dividends you can beg on the street and you can be born into money for most people they get a job they don't like it their expenses rise as they get older they keep working and they end up 
hating it, but what can you do? That's life. My opinion is that we are now in the information age. We went from a time where information was very, very difficult to access. Today, there's so much information, we don't have enough time to consume it. So learn a skill through books, online courses, or any way you can in the quickest means possible and translate that skill into income. Maybe you have photo editing skills. Perhaps you're a great photographer. Maybe you created some Thing and you sell it online. The point is that you stop thinking of a job to pay bills for the next several decades, reverse engineer the entire process, have your bills being paid off by your skill, hopefully that's passively, and then do what you enjoy. Maybe you want to paint, but you know it won't really pay you anything, but now you can. Maybe you really want to be a personal trainer at the gym, but you know it's a minimum wage job. Well, now you can. So you're basically looking for an asset or a means of income on a monthly basis which pays the bills and now do what you love that's my point that's the way i look at it people are thinking about these careers look at those in the financial industry you know i saw so many people who thought they had a great career and then i watched the manager walking them out of the building and then i saw another person people working 10 years 12 years 15 years 20 years in the job earning good money, benefits, and they got walked off. I saw this so many times, and that's the way that life is. But instead, if you just look at it differently, and this is the way I look at it, and that's why I said this is my opinion. The way you look at it is you take your expenses, figure out a way to make that money. Don't think of it necessarily as a job. Just think about it in simple mathematics. I need to make this amount of money. You do it through an asset. For example, if you had a piece of real estate that brought in that $2,000 a month, that's it. Now I can do whatever it is that I want. Of course, you would need money to do that. I'm just saying the whole point is that you got to look at your monthly expenses, get those all in order. Of course, reduce those as much as you possibly can and then figure out what you want to do. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. If you agree, if you disagree, let me know. Share it in the comments below. I really think that a lot has changed. And remember, this entire video, we're talking about 2019. I am not talking about back in the day. I think that things have really changed a lot. So that's all. If you want the financial education that you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. This is really what was missing from the school system. If you want to check them out, look in the link below. If you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. If you want to watch a really interesting video that I think would be beneficial for you, this is the one to check out. So click on it and I will see you there.